adventure, risk, challenge, adversity. All these things go up to make a person of integrity, of character, of strength, of wisdom. Sometimes I'm better off if I don't read the comments on some of these videos, but I was looking at uh, the comments on some creator's challenge where he was talking about uh, the people that died in the submarine. Actually, it was on TikTok. And this gentleman was extremely negative and condescending about the people that passed away on the submarine. That is, if they did. <laughs> I'm not sure what to believe in the media these days. I think they probably did, but God, who knows? Maybe it's a diversion. I really don't know. I don't watch much of those types of things that's on the mainline news media, but I became a little interested in I had hoped that they would find them uh, and they would make it okay, but according to the news, they didn't make it, so. But some of the people commented on how they should have given their money to the poor and they should have done this and they should have done that. And and the, the typical rich people are bad and why didn't they help their poor people out with this money? And I always think the people that are saying things like that, how much are you helping the poor? And then they're like, oh, why'd you spend all that money to do this or to do that? Money is all relative to what you're used to. I see so many people who are jealous of people who have money, but yet those very people wish they had more of it. And many people who are wealthy, or let's say above average income, have learned the value of sowing, of giving, that you reap what you sow. I think few people realize too that people who are the most successful have given the most. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that they gave their money away, although in many cases they have, but they have provided a service for humanity. Let's use Walmart for example. How many people badmouth Walmart, but yet they go there and shop? I go there as little as possible because I products from a different level of, how do I say, markets. But yet Walmart has provided food for millions, products for millions at an affordable price. That's why they're successful. They serve many, many people. And many people that they serve are the very first ones to badmouth Walmart and say Walmart's bad because they don't pay enough, they don't do this, they don't do that. But people who are successful have found a way to provide service that people desire. The more successful they are, the more people they have served with products and services that people want. And then there's many of them people, many of those people who have given to charitable organizations. Andrew Carnegie was one of the richest people of his time. And I can't remember, it's like over a hundred libraries he built. He gave away his fortune while he was living. Many people have found and discovered the value of giving. But yet that doesn't make a CNN headline news. Only when one of these billionaires or millionaires a mistake or gets caught drinking and driving or has an accident or, or does something illegal, do they blast him all over the news and make rich people bad? Well, I've lived in a poor country, third world country, where the poverty was extreme and I've lived amongst those poor people. And it's a hell of a lot more dangerous there and more criminal activity, dishonesty, deceitfulness there than you'll find in the rich neighborhoods. Why is that? And yet many people want to badmouth rich people. Are there people who have a lot of money who are criminal? Of course there are. Are there poor people who are criminal? Yes, 
much more, many more poor people than rich people, at least from what I've seen and experienced. But when a poor person goes out there and commits a crime, it doesn't make headline news. Nobody cares. They don't blast it all over the news because people aren't interested in seeing a poor person fall even lower than they are. But they know, the media knows, that people like to see people fall. People like to see people who are in a position of standing fall off of the mountain, so to speak. Because many people are trying to drag them down anyway. Jealousy, envy, spitefulness. The mainline news media and most news focuses on the negative. And we have some social media influencers that focus on the negative. Sometimes I've spoken about negative things. Maybe what I'm speaking about now is negative. The point of this video is that rich people are no more evil than poor people. You have rich people who are evil or bad or whatever word you choose to use. And you have poor people who are evil or bad. And you have poor people that are really good, kind-hearted and sincere. And you have rich people who are good, kind-hearted and sincere. It doesn't make any difference how much money they have. Money only magnifies what a person already is. Listen to that again. Money only magnifies or brings out more of the character that's already inherent in that person. So if you're a good, giving, loving person and you happen to win the lottery or, or become extremely successful in business, you will be more of what you are. You'll be more giving, more loving, more sincere. And if you're mean, small, egotistical, and you become successful in business, you will be more egotistical, small, and become meaner. Money is a magnifier. If you're power hungry and greedy, you get more money, you'll be more power hungry, more greedy. That's just the way it works. Now, I've had money and I've been poor. <laughs> and it's a lot nicer having money, having enough to provide for your electric, your water, your home, your automobile, which are things many people in the world don't even have. But we get to enjoy those luxuries here in a Western world. So if someone has a billion dollars and he spends 250000 to go down in a submarine to see, see the Titanic, he's taking an adventure. He's enjoying his life. He's worked for that money. And he wants to see something that he'll never have another opportunity to see. Why not? Many people never take risks. They stay in their comfort zone. The comfort zone is a death zone. Why not take a risk? Why do you think people bungee jump or parachute or climb mountains? Because they want to feel alive. And to feel alive, you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to do something that scares you. Every day at my work, we take risks, calculated risks. We climb ladders, we climb scaffolding, we carry heavy things, we use equipment, we use machinery, and there's a certain amount of risk to that. These risks build up your inner man, your character. They keep you sharp. You know you're taking a chance every day. The safe zone, the comfort zone, it's, as I said, a death zone. Now, I'm not telling you to go out there and do stupid, unsafe things, but there's a certain amount of risk that you have to accept in life. You could walk out your door and somebody could drive by and do a drive-by shooting. <laughs> you never know. You just never know what's going to happen. We are so concerned about being safe and comfortable in this Western world that we have forgotten how to enjoy life. I've said this before, but many of the Vietnam veterans said they felt more alive when they were in country. And that was when 
any moment they could have been shot by a sniper and died. So when they were closer to death, they felt more alive. I would say that people who jumped out of a plane, which is not something I want to do with a parachute, they will tell you what a thrill that was, how exhilarating that was. As I said, not my cup of tea, but I've done other things like boxing. Getting in the ring with someone who you know wants to knock you out is pretty exciting. I enjoy that. So without these risks, without these adversities, without these challenges, we do not grow. We do not become the people we were meant to become. Because we stay safe, we stay small, we stay envious. We look at other people and we wish we had what they had, but we don't want to take the risks that they have taken. Be willing to risk, start out small. Risk talking to that clerk. Risk approaching that girl that you think is beautiful. Risk the rejection. Risk going for that job interview. Risk starting your own business. Regardless of if you fail, you will feel much better, stronger, and more alive than you would if you didn't take the chance and live with the regret and the wonder of what if. What if? What if I would have stepped out of my comfort zone and approached that girl? What if I would have rode that skateboard down that mountain? <laughs> I probably would have crashed. What if I hadn't got on my son's scooter that night in the park and went down that hill? Well, I wouldn't have broke my shoulder, but I wouldn't have a nice story to tell <laughs> that I can laugh about and joke about. Quite an experience. Would I do it again? Of course I would. Why not? And you have people to say, for us older guys out there, are oh, you getting too old for that? You want to buy into that? That's fine. Get old when you're 40 years old. I'll be 63 here in a few days. I don't feel like 25, 30 years old. My boys work with me. They're 21 and 20. They get aches and pains, they get hurt, they have injuries, just the same as I do. When we get out of the van, if we've had a long ride after a day's work, they're stiff, oh, they're sore, oh man, it's just like me. But if you don't hang around with young people, you think it's because you're getting old. It's not because you're getting old, it's because you're living life. You didn't slow down when you were 40 or 50 or 60. You maintained your speed. You kept having goals and visions and dreams. You didn't give up on life because somebody or someone told you that it's time to start slowing down. Why is it time to start slowing down? I think it's time to start speeding up because your time is running out here. So use your time wisely. Risk. Don't be afraid of adverse situations. There's a gentleman that I meet up with once a week. I won't call him my mentor, but I do listen to him. He's 84, I think. And he says this, I'm still growing, I'm still learning. So at 84, if he's still growing and learning, how much can we do at 63, 43, 23, 33? Set goals, have a vision, be willing to take chances, to risk, to fail. Failure is not final. Failure is on the pathway to success. The road to success is paved with failure. What happens when you fail? You don't really fail. You fall down, you get back up, you try again. The only time failure is final is when you give up, when you quit, when you say, I've had enough, I can't do it anymore. But that is not congruent with the spirit that lives within you, with the human spirit, the spirit of God within you, your higher self, that part of you that knows, that knows you can succeed in whatever you desire, that part of you that keeps telling you to, yes, go for that desire within you, that your rational mind tells you that it's impossible? 
Yes, we all have that inner voice. Whether we listen to it or not, that's another story. But until you listen to that inner voice, the voice of God within you, you will never have that fulfillment, that contentment, that satisfaction that comes from pursuing the dream that the voice tells you you need to pursue. So listen to that voice today, and when it tells you to do something, do it. Don't logicalize it or rationalize it away. Follow that inner guidance, that intuition, that intuitive voice that knows all, that knows exactly how to bring you to where you truly desire to be. That's it for today. Share this with a friend if you think it will be of value to them. Thank you for joining me, and thank you to all my subscribers. Hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Take care. Have a wonderful day.